I had Carol in my lap, okay, because there was no more room in the inn. Debbie laughed the whole time. And then Ashley is in Beverly's lap. And all these people were like, back there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, they're back there somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to pass that one. That's okay, so this is one of the other traditions that we started in 2017. Denise and I eating the peanut butter brownie. And we have done it every year. And we don't count calories when you get out of the area code of 205. Right. So, yeah, that's when we're. Okay, so this was a, as you can see, I'm trying to hurdle all these together. You know, this is like herding cats. And, um, and Carol and Allison are, you know, leading our way. See what happens. The poor woman's trying to take our picture, and they're not even acting right. This was breakfast um, Saturday morning at the hotel. This is the crew not acting nice, probably just to get kicked out of the hotel. This was a good picture finally. They decided to behave, I think, because Jordan was down there trying to make them behave. <laughs> this was breakfast. This was all of us when, I don't remember when this was. Was it Saturday night? Saturday? Or was it Saturday morning? Saturday morning, okay. <coughs> That's when we got up close to that. Uh, here's just some picture, random pictures that were taken of all of us uh, right afterwards. We always do the, um, the you know pictures after the concert before we head back home or Sunday morning. Okay, so this is our one other tradition we do. We go to Hook Fence on Saturday night. We break bread, but in this case we break hush puppies. And uh, we're so large now we can't get on one table. But I'll tell you something was. Um, I you have, mean you have so many numbers or? <laughs> 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 So we always bless the food, and every single year somebody has come up to us afterwards and has said something about it's so nice to see someone praying out in public. So you know, you just never know when you're being watched. In my case, probably listened to, but anyway, that's the other crew because we have to have two tables. Uh, okay, so this is April on a break, and she's uh, she's stretching. Her Do what? Stretching for Jesus. Stretching for Jesus is what she was saying. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> what does Allison do? Sound asleep. Sound asleep. Yeah, I don't. I don't doubt it. Uh, this is you know when you let them out by themselves, they don't act right. <laughs> Uh, and this was, who's, oh, this was Annette's very first Starbucks ever. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. So we're, uh, we're, you know, having oh. with Annette, Annette getting her Starbucks, very first one. And these are acting crazy people, you know, what can I say? Just more crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> What can you know? What can you say about Carol? Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, Thursday night at eleven o'clock when the pool is closed, uh, I put Annette in charge of these people. And as you can see, Annette didn't do a very good job. So because uh, some of us went to our room, but um, and there's another one. <laughs> I won't say who that is, but they sit back there at the back on the right hand side. And, um, okay, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Let me explain this. <laughs> the next year on the other side of it, okay? this was during Toby Mac concert, and not our type of music, but it was so energized. I mean, he put on a fabulous, fabulous, you know, performance. And so he had us all up. This is Cindy on my left and Denise is on my right. But there's a lady that's in front of us, y'all. She's gotta be 90 years old because she's a dead. Okay, and Denise and I call her friend. She danced the whole time on her feet. And I looked at Denise and I said, 
there we are. <laughs> we need something more years from now. <laughs> but, we'll have to, these things. but we'll have to take a break now because we're going to be too old to drive. <laughs> and so, but we, I mean, so, can I get past that? Is that all that? Thank you. 
chapter 22 tonight. I'm going to read verses 34 through 40 of Matthew 22. had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let's pray. We thank you tonight for this time together. Thank you for the worship that's already taking place. And Lord, we pray right now that your word is open. Lord, that our hearts also will be open and we would allow it to work in us. Realizing, Lord, that you have a purpose in everything uh, that you do for us and with us. And I pray tonight, Lord, that we would just be faithful and obedient to follow you. Uh, Lord, it's so easy to say that we follow, but I pray tonight, Lord, that we would truly consider whether or not we really follow and that, Lord, we would make it a priority uh, tonight and this coming week to truly and actually follow you and allow ourselves to be led by you. We love and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a familiar scripture. We know it. I reference it all the time. Uh, this is the same time frame that we were just in in Luke now a couple of months ago because it's taken us a while during that last week of Jesus' life. But if you remember when we were in Luke, we were talking about there early in the week when he's in the temple teaching how that Groups of people kept coming up to him and asking him questions and trying to tempt him. You, you had the question about, is it lawful to pay our taxes to Caesar? You had the question of the the, the wife that had uh, seven husbands and which ones will she be when she gets to heaven? And, and all those tricky questions. Well, Luke didn't include this question, but but Matthew does. And this is after he's, he's been asked the, the question by the group of Sadducees, and so now uh, this was uh, right after uh, the, the marriage question. And so after the Sadducees, it says that uh, uh, another group comes to him, and a certain man who was a lawyer just asked him a question to tempt him, to, to trip him up. You know, that there are ten commandments we know, but, but in the law there are over 600 things to do and not to do contained within the law of Moses. And so one way to treat Jesus would be, hey, what's the most important one? Because surely if he names one, we could came up, we could come up with some that we think are more important and we'll catch him and trip him up. So they ask him that question. Which one is most important? And we know his answer. One love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and two, love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all other commandments. Everything Jesus said that we are to be and that we are to be doing is based on love. Preacher, that's easy. We got it. love. We're Christians. We're supposed to love. Uh, amen. Let's have the first invitation and go home. Well, I would say that unfortunately it's really not that easy because for some reason Christians often find it hard to do. Love that is. To, to love completely. E even though we, we've been born again, we've received a, a new heart, we've got the Holy Spirit in us, empowering us, still finding the kind of love that loves God supremely with our whole being, our heart, our soul, and our mind, loving our neighbor like we love ourselves and loving our fellow Christians as Jesus loved us, we find that to be difficult. It should be easier but for some reason, it's not. 
Getting saved is easy. We, we talk about that all the time. Sometimes the hardest thing about getting saved is getting lost. You got to figure out you're lost and you need to be saved. But getting saved part's easy. It's just by grace. It's it's faith in Christ Jesus. It's repentance. We know by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. We, we understand that. And so getting saved is easy. Staying saved is easy. But God saved us. God keeps us saved. If it were up to us to stay saved, we, we, we'd be a mess. We'd, we'd have a, a really hard time. But it's that act of sanctification that's so hard. It's, it's that being able to say that we love like Jesus told us to love. I look at a couple of verses. One from Peter, one from Paul. Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 4, says this. And above all things, have fervent charity. Remember, charity is love. Anytime you see charity in the New Testament, that's just how it got translated that particular time. Just put love. Above all things, have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sins. Again, it's all about love. Paul wrote a whole chapter on love. You go to a wedding that I do, you're going to hear it recited. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, I'm going to read a couple of verses. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I'm becoming a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so I can remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have no love, it profiteth me nothing. <clears throat> Verse 7 says, Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. And then we all remember the last verse of the chapter. And now about it, faith, hope, love, and the greatest of these is love. So being obedient to God's command of love should be easy, but we find it to be hard. Being obedient to God's word is the hard part. Getting saved is easy. The sanctification and the act of in our life becoming more and more obedient to the Lord is the hard part. Trying to live every day and each day to be conformed more and more to the image of His Son, like Romans tells us, is the hard part. It's the part we have to work on because even though we're saved, even though we've become a new creature in Christ, we're still in the flesh as long as we're here on this earth. Yeah. We still live in the flesh, and we still live amongst fleshly people, and we still live in a fallen world. The sinful flesh. Sinful flesh doesn't always want to love. Right. Right. Surely somebody besides can't they can agree with that. Because that is the truth. I mean, let's just be honest tonight. I'm the preacher, and I struggle with this. I struggle with a complete, honest love one, for God. Preaching on love, God. No, I love God, but I don't find myself at times loving Him with all my heart, my soul, my mind, because I let something else I love get in His way. Yeah. And so I have to challenge myself to love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. And yes, I have a hard time at times loving my neighbor yeah. as much as I love myself. Because yeah. I'm a selfish, sinful person. And there's some neighbors I don't like. I ain't looking at my brother. <laughs> there's my next door neighbors in the, in the house tonight. But there's some neighbors, there's some folks, there's some people I deal with. They're hard to love. Yeah. Amen. My command is to love them. Yeah. And so that's what I have to challenge myself to do. And it's hard. But guess what? Good news, it's supposed to be hard. Yeah. Begin saves these. The conforming to the image of Jesus Christ is the hard part. This morning, I, I ran through some verses real quick 
uh, of some things that maybe in the Old Testament we thought maybe Jesus shared with those guys or man and woman on the road to Emmaus. Tonight I'm going to throw out a few verses again real quick, just quickly, that according to the New Testament, these are some things that we're supposed to be learning to do in learning to walk in the obedience of faith in Jesus Christ. The first one's Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Denying ourselves, taking up our cross, and following where Jesus leads. And I want to read this one first because this is going to be one that we have to come back to at the end. But that's a challenge for us every day. We don't like to deny ourselves. That's an easy thing to say. Oh, I, I got that preacher denying ourselves. But how often do we deny ourselves? How often do we not do something that our sinful flesh wants us to do because we know it's wrong and we should be following Christ instead? Again, I'm a fat guy. I'll go, I'll go to food and diet. That's an easy one for me. I'm supposed to be being good. I have to deny myself. Last week was Teacher Appreciation Week at Vesper Academy. I didn't deny one time. They had stuff in that teacher workroom every day, and it was stuff I liked. It was stuff that my doctor says I'm not supposed to like. By his rule and Valerie's rule, I'm supposed to say no and leave it alone. I didn't deny myself. I didn't. Because I didn't have the willpower to do it. Well, Get out of that and get into the real world and every day. And it's tough to deny ourselves. It's tough to say, you know what, Jesus, I'm going to do what you tell me to do, and I'm not going to do what my sinful flesh tells me it wants to do. It's tough. It's supposed to be tough. It's supposed to be hard. The next one are two verses found, both uh, written by Paul, one in Colossians 3 and one in Romans 6. Colossians 3 in verse 5 says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon earth. That means kill them. Kill therefore your members which are upon earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Kill those sins in our life. Kill those temptations in our life because, as Romans 6.12 says, let us not only let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Kill it. Get it out of the way. But what we often find ourselves doing because of our fleshly sinful person instead of killing it we pet it and take care of it. And we hold it in the background just in case we need it. You need to quit carrying that blanket around. You're 12 years old now. Oh, we got to have this is my security is what I need. We'll hold on to some of those sins instead of killing them and getting rid of them. We know how much our flesh loves them, so we hold on to them just a little bit longer. It's supposed to be hard. Philippians chapter 2, Paul writes this in the third verse. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but the loneliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Let each one of us think about others over us. Let's consider how others feel more importantly than how we feel. Let's see how what we do affects others more than we consider how it affects us. Let's see if what we do is helpful to someone else instead of making it have to be helpful to us in order to do it. You go, preach, I wish you go back to Revelation. I don't like this stuff. It's supposed to be hard. It's not easy. Again, in Colossians, Paul writes this to the church of Colossae in chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another.
one another. Do I need to stop there? <laughs> if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And then verse 15. And let the peace of God rule your hearts, to the which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. That's tough stuff. Be kind, be forbearing, be forgiving to one another. Forgive, because the Lord forgave you. So we ought to be forgiving each other. At the end of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, at the end of 4 is when we talk about the, the second coming of Christ and, and those that uh, uh, are dead in Christ will rise first at the end of, of, of that. We talked about it yesterday uh, here uh, with Donna's uh, memorial service. You'll hear it at every funeral. Well, the very next chapter is the end of that book and there's like a rapid fire sequence of things that Paul writes to these folks in that church that they ought to be doing. One is this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Somebody does evil to you, doesn't mean you do evil to them. It's supposed to be hard. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Both among yourselves within the church and to all men, including folks who ain't saved, that's on the outside of the church. Well, it's hard to get past that first phrase. Somebody does evil to me. I'm doing evil back. Yeah. That's my first thought. My first thought is not, well, Jesus wouldn't do that. And so it's a fight within me to try to get to the point where I say, well, Jesus wouldn't do that, so I don't need to do that. No, my sinful side says, you do it. They hurt you, you hurt them. Yeah. They pop off to you, pop off to them. Don't give them a chance. It's supposed to be hard. The next couple of verses there, in 1 Thessalonians 5. Rejoice evermore. Why well, don't I want to rejoice? Put my frown on. I ain't having a good day. Don't talk to me about rejoice. I will be mad for a while. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Praying's easy. To you out of fellowship with the Lord, you don't want to talk to them. Because the things. You ain't got things right like you should. You don't want to talk to the Lord. So you end up not praying. Pray without ceasing. And then in verse 18, in everything give thanks. Did it say every good thing? In everything give thanks. Everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I give you a tough one from the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus himself said, Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. It's say bless them out. <laughs> bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And that's just a few sample verses. But it's, it's, it's hard enough. It's difficult to take our human fleshly side and turn it in to obedience to the Holy Spirit within us and the greatest commandments which are to love. Love the Lord God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. There's only one possible way to do it, and that's with God Himself. Yeah. Can't do it without Him. We can't do it by ourselves. We have to have <laughs> the, the Lord on our side. You remember when the rich young ruler came to Jesus and asked him, What did he need to do to be saved? And Jesus just told him straight up, sell all you got, and give it to the poor. He said he went away sorrowful because he made the choice. I love my money more than I love this idea of being saved and following Jesus. So he left. And Jesus said at that point, it's harder 
for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter into heaven. And you remember what the disciples said? The disciples said, well, who do we say then? Because in their mind, rich folks, they were the holiest people. The reason they were rich is because God had blessed them out of them being holy. So if, a, if it's hard for a rich man, who get to heaven? Jesus' answer to that was, well, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. It is possible. It is possible to become the kind of Christian who conforms to the image of Jesus Christ, who bases what they do on love. Loving God with everything. Loving your neighbor as yourself. But it is impossible without Jesus and without the Holy Spirit. I, I want to give you this. Back the very first thing that, that I told you was, you know, back when the, the, the very first verses was about deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow. We're going to look right now on Sunday mornings, and, and we're in post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. Remember on Sunday afternoon, early evening, and he's appeared to the two on the Emmaus Road. Well, we're, we're going to get to some other appearances not all the appearances are in Luke. There's some other appearances in other places, especially in John. You remember in John is when Peter said, hey, I'm going fishing. They all go out fishing. And then, and then they come back and see Jesus. And he's prepared something for them to eat. They come back. And then Jesus begins to ask him, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Be my sheep. That, that conversation. Well, at the end, of, I'm not going to go through the whole conversation, but at the end of that conversation, John chapter 21, we'll pick up with verse 18. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. He's talking to Peter. This is after he's told Peter, Feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee, whether thou wouldest not. Verse 19. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. So get the picture again. He said, You know, when you were young, Peter, you did what you wanted to do. You went where you wanted to go. Nobody could tell you anything. But there's coming a day when you're going to stretch forth your arms. You're going to have to go where you don't want to go signifying the death. He's telling Peter, you're going to be crucified one day. They're going to kill you just like they killed me. Here's my commandment and encouragement to you, Peter. Follow me. And then notice, you remember what Peter says in verse 20. Then Peter, turning about, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, maybe a little jealous, maybe wanting to know, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? So we know it's John he's talking about. And then in verse 21, Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Right. If I, if I got to stretch my arms out and I got to go and die, if I got to be crucified, what about him? Yeah. Because, you know, the one you love, but what you going to do with him? How's he going to have to die? And notice what, John, uh, what Jesus says in verse 22. Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Peter, we ain't talking about John. I'm talking about you. And once again, he tells him three words. Follow thou me. That's the key to everything. Follow thou me. We have the Holy Spirit within us. We know the commandment is to love. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. The only way to do it is to be in complete fellowship with the Lord, heart right, and follow Him. Don't worry about John. Don't worry about filling the blank on whoever you're looking at other than yourself. Come on, be honest. You find yourself at times saying, I'll tell you what, I'm bad. That no is worse than me. <laughs> I didn't mean that no bear. <laughs> I mean, you know what? If they can be that way and they stand up and say, Oh, how I love Jesus, I, you know, I'm not so bad. 
No, don't worry about other folks. This is you. This is you being conformed to the image of His Son. This is you growing every day. This is you following Jesus yourself, not following somebody else or going by what they do, they think, or they say. Depending on the leadership of the Holy Spirit and following Jesus through the obedience of His Word, prayerfully obey, depending and following Jesus, denying ourselves, taking up our cross, and following Him. I close with a couple of things that I've, I've said a hundred times over the years. Never have liked those car tags that say God is my co-pilot. Something's wrong right there. He don't need to be your co-pilot. He needs to be your pilot and you need to be a passenger. You need to let him be the one that's in control. You need to be following him. We need to be taking the Lord and using him as our steering wheel, not as our spare tire. Follow him. We used to, back in the day, it's been a long time now, but we used to go and play ball on Saturdays. We'd all meet up where we was meeting for the day, and then we'd all get in the line and we'd go. We'd take off and head to the place. And I always wanted to be the first because I hated following people. Because I can't stand following people that don't know how to drive and they go 20 miles an hour one minute, 55 the next. So I won't get out front because I'm going to drive how I drive. And then I'd get back because they wouldn't keep up. And I'm like, how are they going to get there? We don't know where we're going and they won't keep up. Follow. It said it ain't hard. Y'all don't know where we're going. The guy in front knows. Follow. I wonder how many times Jesus looks behind. Yeah. Where y'all at? Yeah. Follow. I know where you're going. You don't know where you're going. Deny yourself. Not what you want to do. Follow me. Follow. I close with this. Most of y'all know this story. We first moved into our house in Pleasant Grove. If you ever got to our house in Pleasant Grove, you had to do that to get back there. So we tell everybody, when you leave, it's easy. Don't turn till you have to. Left, right, left. You're out of the community, you're headed home. Well, Y'all had a party for us. First Christmas. Everybody's leaving. Phone rings, answer the phone, all you can hear is Ducky laughing hysterically. <laughs> they are lost as can be. Did you go left, right, left, right? Well, no, it just didn't sound right. <laughs> if you went left, right, left, right, y'all be on the way to home. Stop where you at. Tell me the closest number you see. We'll come try to find you and get you out of the neighborhood. Just go left, right, left, right. The Lord tells us, hey, left, right, left, right. We got to deny ourselves. Because ourselves, we get to go, I think it's going to be right, left, right, left. Uh-uh. Deny yourself. Be faithful to obedience to his word. And follow him. And he'll take you where you're supposed to be. And he'll teach you how to love him supremely and love your neighbor like you love him. Amen. Let's stand. Why don't these get us a verse of invitation? Open oh, no, altar. We'd like to come pray tonight. We'd love to pray with you while we sing a verse.
All right, but Father, Lord, I just thank you for another opportunity to come to your house, Lord, and sing praises to you and hear your word preached, Lord, and just pray that you'll just help each and every one of us, Lord. As, uh, as Brother Tommy said, it's not easy uh, to follow you. You never promised us that it would be. You never told us it would have a, a life of just extravagancies and be on top of the world, Lord, but that uh, we would be a peculiar people and be a lowly people, Lord, and I just pray that you just help each and every one of us, too. Uh, as Brother Tom has challenged us to deny ourselves and follow you, Lord. We just pray that you'll just take us home tonight and bring us back at the expected time. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus.